Traveling alone can be the one thing that completely changes your life. And there are a couple great reasons why. Today I want to explain you on my experiences of traveling to over 10 different countries in 5 continents, how it helped me develop in the person that I am right now. I want to give you 3 reasons why you should travel alone and 7 secrets to better your experience doing so. If you watch until the end, you will learn that traveling solo is not what loners do, it's instead what leaders do. Here's why. Number 1. Alone versus lonely. I had a discussion with one of my trainers at a gym that I manage. He told me that he isn't capable of being alone. Whenever he's at home, there has to be some sort of TV or music playing. Friends have to come over on the weekends and there always has to be something going on. I used to be like that some years ago, but this has changed with traveling on my own. I believe that it's key to be able to spend time with yourself. We can only have truly deep relationship and love if you're not afraid of being alone. Otherwise, deep inside ourselves, we will know that we entered that relationship or friendship out of necessity, not out of choice. That we essentially entered that relationship because we're weak and if we want it or not, the other person can sense that. That's a bad place to be in. The best medicine that we can take is traveling solo. Because the one person that you can always count on is you. Number two, self-reliance. I remember having a heated argument with my mother when I was about 15 years old. I was doing cool stuff, learning parkour, training martial arts, yet never did I start things on my own. I never showed incentive. The reason why I did those activities in the first place was because I had cool friends that dragged me to them. Whenever they took a break, I did too. Whenever they started something new, I did too. I guess this is common as a teenager, but I realized that I couldn't count on myself. This all changed when I went on my first solo trip to Thailand. For the first time in my life, I couldn't follow a proven blueprint. I had to use my own mind, deal with my own stuff, and to be honest, I learned to think for myself. I was being self-reliant. This helped me in my career as a manager of five fitness centers and online coach and this also helped me with my social life. There's something about Rick in Rick and Morty, a character that is extremely self-reliant that just fascinates us about him. You use pity to lure in your victims. It's how you survive. I survive because I know everything. Or the character Jason in Jason Bourne or James in James Bond. Whatever life throws at them, they're able to deal with it. All those impressive characters are absolutely self-reliant. A good part to be more like James, Jason or Rick is traveling alone. Number 3. Leadership skills. Being self-reliant also makes you a better leader. A big part of having leadership capabilities is being able to make decisions when there's a lot of uncertainty. And making those decisions fast, you must. In my first trip to Thailand, I broke down at my first night. I slept in a prison-like, tiny room with no blankets at Khao San Road, which is a big party mile in Bangkok, because I planned absolutely nothing before I went on this journey. On top of that, the door to my room couldn't be locked because it was damaged. I was sure my stuff would get stolen. I had such a big culture shock and felt completely helpless at that time. After a sleepless night, I decided at 3am to book a better accommodation for the next two days online and plan my trip something that I've never done before. I also took the necessary steps to never sleep in such a prison again. This was the first real time where my back was truly against the wall, but the next decisions that I took simply had to work. And guess what? It was liberating. My brain started to work on overdrive. This experience still shapes me to this day and gives me a reminder that making an imperfect decision is always better than making no decision at all because it gives us control and the power that we need to be leaders and the person we're following in the first place. Now here are the seven tips to how you survive 
on a solo trip and get the most out of it. Number one, location. Your planning of your journey all depends on the location where you actually go. A city trip inside your own country will take way different planning than a trip to North Korea. The three main factors that we have to consider are language, security and culture. Countries where the native language is, is similar or same to your own are way easier to travel to than countries with a different native language. Australia is easier for a native English speaker to travel to than Thailand. Generally, countries with a lot of poverty are harder to travel to because of a lack of personal security. South Africa has been extremely dangerous for me as a white person. I got a death threat while walking to a supermarket down there. You need to get the basic knowledge about the culture. Know what people value and stay out of trouble. Dubai has way different laws than Germany, for example. In all of those cases, know how to defend yourself and learn martial arts. Number two, money and passport. These are the two most important things when you travel on your own. Get at least $300 of cash with you before starting the journey so you can survive at least one to two weeks if you lose your credit or debit cards. Make sure you talk with your bank before you travel to a distant country. Some cards might have geoblock, which is a basic safety measurement. This happened to me in South Africa. I couldn't use my card. I had to have a long call with my bank in Switzerland very expensive. You can replace the lost toothbrush with two dollars. A lost passport will cost you hundreds of dollars and plenty of hours at the embassy and probably the police station. Be paranoid about money and your passport. Check them regularly, put them in a place where you know you can't lose them. Number three, blend in and buy it their approach. This goes back to number one, but know where you go and blend in. The last thing that you want to look like is a tourist. Know the basic words of the language of the country you're going to. Don't wear expensive watches or jewelry. In fact, try to bring as little stuff with you as you possibly can and use the buy it their approach. In the end, realize that everyone reuses the clothes and doing the laundry less often is completely okay when you travel. Trust me. Number four, stay in hostels. As you've seen before, you need to be able to spend time on your own. But it's always good to have options. You want to be able to make social connections with positive people. That's when hostels come in. They're cheap, sociable and fun. Within a couple hours, you meet cool people if you're open to it, which you can then take out for a city tour or have a nice adventure with. It's also a great way to develop your social skills. I've stayed in hostels in Moscow and Berlin. It's always the same cool experience. Just always bring a lock with you so your stuff doesn't get stolen. Number five, listen to your gut and be paranoid. At one point in Thailand, me and a couple buddies that I met at a hostel decided to go visit a ping pong show. It's a fun name, but it turned out to be a quite distressing presentation. You can Google it if you're brave enough. We hopped in a taxi and simply asked the driver where there's a show nearby. He responded with, no problem, I know the best in town. So he drove us into a very shady, dark alley with grim people, opening the door and welcoming us to their ping pong show. It was still the real deal, but we got completely scammed over with the drink prices. Paying like $20 for a single drink, which is about 10 times higher than the normal prices in Thailand. The moment we arrived at the alley, I had a bad gut feeling that something was completely wrong here. Now with some more experience, I would have simply left and listened to my gut feeling. So listen to your gut when traveling alone and avoid drinking alcohol, especially in rather dangerous countries. Number six, download offline Google Maps. At the last day of my stay in Moscow, I took a taxi to the airport. Early in the morning, we would drive along the highway to Sheremetyevo Airport. About 10 minutes into the drive, I checked my Google Maps and realized that we were going in a completely different direction. Immediately, I told the taxi driver that if we're sure we're on our way to the airport because my Google Maps is kind of telling me other things. He said, of course, but succinctly made a turn about one minute after the confrontation of mine. Now, did the taxi driver simply didn't know the way to the airport or was he tired early in the morning? 
Probably, or it might have been an attempt of kidnapping, which is common, especially in Latin America, but can happen everywhere. This can be prevented if you call it out directly, aggressive and early in the process. The only way we can know this in a foreign city is by using offline Google Maps, by downloading the landscape before we arrive on the scene. Again, it's all about preparation. Also, while checking that you're on the right way, hold your phone visible in the back seat, which makes it show like the police is just a button away. If you ever notice that you're really getting kidnapped by a taxi or in general, and this is just a rule of thumb, never go to the secondary location. This is an advice that, uh, that I once learned from a Navy SEAL. Jump out of the taxi at reasonable speeds or fight your way out. It's best to get shot dead while being in the taxi than getting tortured for ransom. Number one takeaway is never allow yourself to get to the first stop. When they abduct you, they're not gonna do a great job restraining you. But when they get to the first stop, they will. You want to avoid that at all costs. Number seven, buy a SIM card there. This secret doesn't protect your life, it simply protects your bank account. Buy a SIM card in the country you travel to. A minute of roaming in an international sphere with your local telephone company can cost you hundreds of dollars. An international SIM card with plenty of online data will cost you a fraction of that. Simply buy a SIM card at the airport after your arrival and use it accordingly for your time of travel. Traveling alone has the power to change your life. It makes you more comfortable with being alone, makes you self-reliant and in the end makes you a better leader. Use the seven tips, location, money and passport, blend in, stay in hustles, listen to your gut, use offline Google Maps and a local SIM card to make the most out of your stay and be safe. So when is your next traveling adventure? If you like this video and want to know more about fitness, nutrition, mindset and health and how these things can help you get the most out of your life, subscribe to this channel.